Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Welcome, my friend, to the middle of the week. I appreciate so much that you are making Bible Tract Echoes a part of your day. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Hebrews in chapter 3. Hebrews 3, if possible, turn right now in your own copy of God's Word to that place. That is Hebrews chapter 3. And if you can, have pen and paper ready for writing some notes. I strive to make our Bible passage that we're looking at each and every day clear and usable and some notes that you take will aid you in putting our teaching time into action later on in your life. But I only want to begin our time this way. I want to ask the question, what is your job? What is your job? And now, a simple question, yes, but it's a profound one, far more profound than it first appears. You see, the more clearly you can answer the question, then the greater sense of success and accomplishment you're going to experience. If you and I don't know what's expected of us on our jobs, then great frustration is going to be felt by us. We'll never know for sure whether we're accomplishing what is expected of us. Now, I bring up the whole job issue because in our passage today, we're going to see two men. Their names, Moses and Jesus. And both of these men are builders, yet they do not have the same job or at least the same expectations placed upon them. You see, the Jewish people have for centuries misunderstood Moses's job. And because they misunderstood Moses's job, they were then unprepared for Jesus, the Messiah, to come and do his job. Now, the opening six verses here in Hebrews 3 are designed to help us to see the differences between the jobs performed by Moses and by Jesus. And with this difference seen, then you and I will be able to say, yes, Jesus is superior to Moses, so I had better listen to what Jesus has to say to me. Get your Bible ready. Before I go any farther, I want to accomplish three things rather quickly. Number one, I want to urge you to get from us, from Bible Tracks Incorporated, a complete sample pack of our gospel tracks. Now, a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation telling the reader how to know Jesus Christ as their Savior from sin. Gospel tracts are a tremendous evangelism tool. Secondly, I want to tell you about one of the tracks. The one of the tracks in my hand right now is entitled The Best I Can. This track is designed to be usable with adults, with teenagers, even with children. It's simple, clear, straightforward, and it makes the gospel evident that you cannot get to heaven on your own works, on your own merit, by your goodness. You need somebody to pay the fare, to the, the plane ticket, so to speak, into heaven. This gospel track has a picture of a swimmer on the front who's doing the best he can to win a race. Some people think to get into heaven, you must do the best you can. Well, friend, the best you and I could ever do will never get us into heaven. That's why Jesus paid the sin price for us. Here's a great track, the best I can. It's in that sample packet. I want you to get it from us, please. Now, the third thing I want to do right now is that if I could, I want to prompt you to get more information about Bible Tracks Incorporated. You can find that either on our website or ask us for some information. We'd be glad to give it to you. I'd appreciate very much if you would consider helping us take the gospel to the whole world. 
This ministry is a faith mission endeavor. We are enabled to do what God's called us to do by the people of God. And we're doing, taking gospel tracts in different languages to reach the world with the gospel. How desperate we are in need for the gospel to go around the world these days. Well, right now, come with me, please. Hebrews chapter three, beginning at verse one, the Bible says this. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man, speaking of Jesus, for this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, insomuch as he who hath builded the house hath more honor than the house. For every house is builded by some man, but he that built all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which are were to be spoken after. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Stop right there. Now, chapter three and chapter four are about Jesus being superior to Moses. Chapter three, verse one, going over to almost the very end of chapter four, that section has basically two parts. The opening six verses I read here in chapter three give us two workers. Notice the W word, workers. Then, beginning at chapter three and verse seven, over to chapter four and verse 14, we are given a warning. It's the second warning. So, chapter three has workers and warnings. And just in case you are unable to listen to the entire broadcast, let me right now give you the bottom line point here of chapter three. Are you ready? Here it is. The point of chapter three is this. Moses spoke for God, but the people of his day would not listen to him. So they missed out on the literal promised land. Jesus also spoke for God, and he was far greater than Moses. If not believing Moses brought awful consequences, and it did, then how much worse will it be for us if we don't believe what Jesus says? Now, that's the point of chapter three, in case you fall asleep during the rest of the broadcast. I've identified the two major sections here of chapters three and four, but for our purposes in walking through chapter three, I'm going to look at these uh, chapter three with an eye to the word jobs, J-O-B-S. I find here in chapter three, four kinds of jobs. Are you ready? Here's the outline of chapter three. Verses 1 through 6 is the job of two builders, the job of two builders. Verses 7 through 11, the job of God's Bible. Verses 12 to 15, the job of God's believers, plural. And then verses 16 to 19, the job of this believer, you and me as individuals. I read verses 1 to 6. Let's come back and identify here, these job of these two builders. Verse one, the believers in verse one are identified. The believers are identified. We saw that on Monday's broadcast. If you missed it, you need to go back and note and re-listen to Monday's broadcast. We gave four labels by which believers are identified there. So in verse one of chapter three, believers are identified. I can say no more about that. We did that on Monday. Point number two, Based upon verses 1 and 2, the builders now are identified. In verse 1, believers are identified. Now, builders are identified. Jesus, in verses 1 and 2, is identified. And then Moses is identified. We, though, in verse 1, as we begin to walk through here, are told to consider or to pay very close attention to Jesus far more than Moses. That, by the way, was a very difficult thing for the first century Jewish people to do. Uh, this is who this book was addressed to, first century Jews. To cons- for them to consider Jesus to be greater than Moses would require on their part a powerful heart and mind transformation. You and I need to have a firm grip. We need to consider who Jesus is. 
First point, believers are identified. Second point, builders are identified. Now in verse three, the better is identified. The better, look at verse three, it says this. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses. Stop right there. Jesus, the verse said, was to be counted or valued by the first century Hebrew people as better than Moses. Jesus was to be seen as deserving of greater glory. It means that, yes, it'd be okay for the Jewish people to shine a 40-watt light bulb onto Moses as long as they then got a floodlight in full glory and shone it on and with their praise unto Jesus. And why were they to shine far greater glory unto Jesus? Well, verse 3 goes on to use the illustration of comparing a building with a builder. Notice the difference. Comparing a building with a builder. Now, listen carefully to me right here. The house being spoken of here is the people of God, the people of God, all believers, no matter whether Old Testament believers or New Testament believers, all believers of whatever era were always saved by one method, by faith in God's salvation plan. All believers are part of God's house. The builder of this house is Jesus. It was Jesus who was turning hearts to believe during the days when Moses carried out those 10 plagues. Now, please note the building always reflects on the one who built it. The builder gets greater glory and praise than the building itself. The Old Testament Jews had come to think of Moses as the builder rather than God. I come now to point number four. I've been using some B words. Here's one more. Verses four through six give us the business. The business is identified. Just what was Moses' business, his job during his time of leading the Jewish people back in the Old Testament? Well, verse five calls him a servant. A servant? Now, wait a minute now. Do you know there are three key words translated slave or servant here in the New Testament? Here, the word does not mean so much slave, but a person holding a very confidential job and position, a very confidential job. This is the kind of, well, you and I would call him a right-hand man, that kind of a helper, that kind of a servant. Moses held a key job in God's work, but Jesus was, verse 6 says, the son. He wasn't the servant. He wasn't the confidential servant. He was the son himself. Jesus sits enthroned as the master of the house. Moses was the entrusted confidential servant of Jesus. Okay, that was the business of each man. Thus, Jesus is superior to Moses. But verse 6 ends by saying that Jesus' house is a house of people. We, the penman says, we are his house if we hold fast. Oh, don't be turned off by that phrase, if we hold fast. It simply means that holding fast to Christ is evidence that you are part of God's house. Oh, dear listener, are you feeling the pressure to abandon your allegiance to Jesus? Is your walk with Jesus becoming hard and perilous? Please know that you are far from the first to experience this. That's exactly where the first readers were. But you will miss out on the joys and peace of Christ if you fail to trust his words during your trials. Don't abandon your commitment to love and faithfully follow, openly follow Christ with your life, with your heart. Listen to his words. Read them daily from his word and you will not miss out on the joys and the delights of walking with Christ. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888 and our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, 
The word tracts is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTractsInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.